compact, lightweight, subdued, inexpensive, dongle. If any of those words are part of your vocabulary, go ahead and delete them right now. Because when MSI called us and asked if we wanted to check out their latest and greatest iteration of the GT8 series, <laughs> we actually had to go check and see if we had enough space in the warehouse. And after careful consideration and a game of Tetris in real life, we realized that this photo on MSI's website was not to scale. So as big as it was, <laughs> we could make it happen. So fast forward two weeks and here we are with the MSI GT83 VR 7RF Titan SLI by MSI, or as I'll be calling it, Ryan. But is its performance as big as its name? Let's find out, shall we? Because that's what we do. The Phoenix O'Tour is a full-sized, minimalistically designed keyboard complete with Cherry MX switches and a new white backlit variant. Check it out at the link below. The first thing you'll notice about Ryan, aside from his aggressive shape, is that he's freaking uh, huge, if you know what I mean. The second thing you'll notice is that he is freaking heavy. The laptop itself weighs over 13 pounds. And when you add on the twin power bricks at three pounds each that uh, evoke a certain, you know, failed 90s game console, you end up with a total carry weight of 19 pounds. I hope you've been working out. But what all will you get to bring with you? No dongles, methinks. With a diagonal screen size of 18.4 inches and a maximum thickness at the back of 69 millimeters, Ryan has plenty of room in the trunk for hardware. He's packing dual GTX 1080s in SLI, a ballin' cooling system with 15 heat pipes, two 29 blade fans and a smaller 25 blade fan, and he's got room for IO2. You get support for up to three external 4K 60 Hertz displays if you use the Thunderbolt 3 port as a DisplayPort port. He's got a Blu-ray burner and a plethora of audio outputs, including Toslink and an extra headphone jack for the excellent included ESS Sabre DAC for your portable headphones. Not that you'll be using Ryan on the go much. Balancing the GT83 on my bony frail lap is an exercise in frustration. A lap top this is not, especially when you consider the placement of the SteelSeries designed keyboard. On the subject of which, Linear RGB Cherry MX Speed switches may appeal to some, but I actually personally miss the tactile bump of the previous model's brown key switches. To be clear, this is still a full mechanical keyboard on a laptop, which is dope AF, as the kids say, but that doesn't make it immune to criticism. Not only did they again replicate this key, for some reason, the significant lip around the edge of the keyboard returns with no wrist rest included to make it more comfortable. It is something you'll get used to, but there's definitely a learning curve. And the same goes for the trackpad. I tell you guys, the number of times that I typed something and reached down to, oh, oh, mm, yeah, right. To its credit, it's got a smooth, consistent feel with satisfyingly tactile buttons, and touching this corner turns it into a lackluster numpad for emergencies, but it's clearly sidelined by the keyboard and the internals, meaning that's just another usability disadvantage. Though in fairness to MSI, if you're carrying this monstrosity around, they probably expect you to have a mouse in your wagon as well, and you could even throw in a USB numpad if you were into that sort of thing. But will you also need some speakers? MSI doesn't think so, and in this case, 
We actually agree. The Titan's four speaker, one subwoofer setup got plenty loud in our testing with a surprising fullness to the sound, even if it's a little light on the sub bass. And the aforementioned ESS Sabre DAC allowed us to drive even high-end headphones with MSI's Nehemic 2 providing excellent virtual surround for gaming. Before we move on to performance testing though, we really need to talk about the display. You don't often see an 18.4 inch laptop monitor, but its strange size doesn't make its factory calibrated 100% sRGB IPS panel any less beautiful. Where it does lose points is its resolution, refresh rate, and lack of standout features like G-Sync. A balls to the wall gaming laptop powering a 1080p 60 hertz gaming experience with screen tearing feels a little like watching Emma Watson get married to a gopher. It's just a total mismatch. So then with all of that out of the way, let's move on to testing. Our Ryan is specced to the max with a one terabyte twin NVMe RAID 0 storage array that MSI calls Super RAID. Load games works in seconds. All right then, let's load games. We'll be comparing against our Sager NP9873 and the Acer Predator 21X on the laptop side, as well as two comparable desktop setups, with the answer to the most important question coming first. Is Ryan worth his weight in frames per second? Actually, yes. The Sager tops the charts, but the Titan GT83 crushes the rest of the competition, with our Predator 21X actually coming in below our desktops, to the surprise of nobody who has ever picked it up. Weighted <laughs> averages aside though, the Titan found itself near the bottom of our performance laptop pack with the DirectX 11 modes of both Deus Ex Mankind Divided and Rise of the Tomb Raider, but gained significant traction with the DirectX 12 modes. For Honor saw the Titan in turbo mode pick back up to become the highest of our minimum frame rate performers, and only the GTX 1080 Ti desktop surpassed the Titan's turbo minimum in GTA 5. With that said though, its average frame rates were again at the back of the lineup, with Ghost Recon Wildlands echoing that average result. Under full IDA64 load, our CPU got up to a cozy 88 degrees, while Furmark worked our heat pipes over time with toasty GPUs at 85 and 90 degrees. With Cooler Boost enabled, temperatures dropped to 85 on the CPU with the GPUs at 85 and 81, but of course, it gets, uh, shall we say, a fair bit louder. So who is the Titan GT83 Ryan Edition for exactly? With its MSRP of 5,400 US dollars and minimum effort one year warranty, it's not gonna be winning any top value awards. I mean, seriously, MSI, you could have at least given us the full version of WinZip to go along with our Norton trial. But I can't fault the performance and while our desktops obviously come ahead in terms of performance per dollar, they aren't as portable as Ryan. And compared to similarly specced offerings from Acer and Sager, the GT83 Titan is right in the ballpark. Or should I say, baller park. Yeah, I went there. So you heard from your nephew or niece or whatever that a VPN is a good idea and you go and you look into it and you're like, what? DNS configuration, port forwarding, are you kidding me? Tunnel bear? takes all that crap out of setting up a VPN for personal use. You download TunnelBear, it's available for PC, Mac, Android, iOS, they even have a Chrome extension. You press like one button and boom. 
your internet connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and you appear to the websites and services that you want to use online as though you are some anonymous person from some other random country, allowing you to access services that maybe you normally wouldn't be able to. They've got a top-rated privacy policy, and they do not log your user activity. And the best part of all of this is you don't have to take my word for it. You can try it for free with 500 megabytes of data and no credit card required. When you choose to get a year of unlimited data, you can even save 10% too by going to tunnelbear.com slash LTT. So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or check out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is a link to our community forum, which you should totally join, and our merch store, which you should totally go check out.